this entire thing. All right, here we go, guys. Okay, so we're going to go and get started. Um, so question 10 all the way through till 17. Okay, and Alex, you mentioned which ones that I said you mustn't do. Just mention that again for me. 11 and 12. 11 and 12. Perfect. Okay, so question 10, explain how an uncharged object can be attracted to a charged object. Use diagrams to illustrate your answer. Okay, so if anybody would like to take a swing at uh, this um, uh, question, uh, please let me know. How should I approach this question? Um. I said any charged object, whether it's negative or positive, yes. um, is attracted to a neutral object. So like in my book here or where I searched, it said a plastic golf tube mm -hmm. that is charged. Yes. You can rub it on animal, animal fur and it will yes. attract neutral paper bits. That's it. Exactly like that. Um, and that is a very good exp explanation answer. Okay, is that um, if I take your answer, if you take like a golf tube, or even if you do either ruler and uh, paper um, object uh, experiment, everything when it comes to electrostatics is the transfer of electrons. Okay, so me obviously rubbing a ruler on my hair, a, um, I think it's a perspex ruler. I don't have a perspex ruler, I have a plastic ruler, so unfortunately I can't do the um, experiment myself anymore. Okay, but if you do that, and if you just take a page in your book or any piece of paper, usually if you break it up into small bits, the piece of paper will be attracted to the ruler almost instantaneously. Okay, and um, of course it is the same diagram. Okay, because they said we should use diagrams to illustrate our answer. Okay, so when we see that in the exam, okay, it's okay for now. But when we see this in the exam, we must pay uh, attention to that. Is that when we need to draw a uh, diagram to illustrate our answer. And it is available in the textbook, which I'm not going to go and scroll up to just uh, yet. Okay, I sent the textbook in the group for everybody. It's free. It's open source. Siavula textbook. It's open source textbook. It's downloadable for free. Okay, so we have no problems using it now. It's a free resource. So please um, go have a look at it. Extra examples, extra explanations whenever you are, even when you guys go back to uh, school. Show you question 12 quickly. So, question, um, I think I'm still on the eraser here. There we go. Question 12 um, was a quite a nice uh, question in terms of the fact that they we use this formula Q is equal to NQ uh, E. Okay, so you guys can take down notes on this. And they gave us a uh, big Q, and also we are well familiar with what a QE should uh, should be, okay? Which we know that this is the charge on an electron. Uh, they gave us big Q, which was negative eight comma six times ten. Uh, let me go look. You won't see me go look now. Um, ten to negative eighteen. Okay, coulombs, that was the charge on the object. N is the number of electrons, and we know that QE, because we're working with electrons, will be N times negative 1, 6 times 10 to the negative 19. All right, coulombs. Okay, we're all familiar with what we need to do. Okay, we need to just divide both sides by negative 1, 6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. Okay. We do to both sides. See, these will cancel, all right? And therefore, if we solve, N, obviously being the number of electrons, should equal. Does anybody uh, have an answer now? If you want to just put that in the calculator, you can for me. Uh, I'm going to do it as well, so don't, so don't stress. negative 8.6 times 10 to the power of negative 18, all divided by negative 1, 6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. Okay, we get an answer of 53,75. If we round both up, it will give us an answer of about 54. All right, so 54 electrons. All right, we need to give it in whole numbers. All right. 
Okay, so that was number 12. Okay, and I know I said don't do that, but again, I just taught it to you for enrichment. Okay, so 13 to 17. Okay, which was our homework? An object has excess of 235 electrons. What is the charge on the object? Okay, who would like to take me through uh, this one? Can I say it? Of course. Okay, so um, since it's uh, they're asking about the electrons, I say 235 times negative 1 comma 6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. And I got negative 3 comma 7 6 times 10 to the power of negative 17. Okay, perfect. That sounds correct. So if we use this formula, which is Q is equal to N um, times QE. So this is the formula that we use, correct? We are given N as Alex mentioned, which is 235, and you multiply that by negative 1, 6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs to get the charge here, and therefore, what did that, uh, what's that answer again, Alex? Negative 3, 7, 6 times yes. 10 to the power of negative 17. Times 10 to the power of negative 17. Finish it off for me. Um, o coulombs. Good, fantastic. Now that's a correct answer right there. Okay. Great. Okay, 14 then now says that object has an excess of 235 protons. What is the charge on the object? Now my question to you guys is for number 14, do we need to perform the same equation? Do we have to perform a calculation? for number 14, because in number 13, we just calculated for electrons. Do we need to perform a calculation for number 14 as well? Yes or no? No, I don't think so, because instead, I know uh, the first one's electrons, the second one's uh, protons, so therefore yes. you take away the negative sign from the one comma six. Exactly. So instead of saying negative, yeah. You, so you get basically the same answer, but without the negative sign. Exactly correct. Well done. Okay, so as um, Alex has correctly answered, and I'm sure Yusha agrees, is that we have already calculated, okay, the uh, number of electrons, okay? So how the calculation would have looked, okay, if this was the first question, it still would have been Q equals still 235, okay, protons, but instead of multiplied by negative 1, 6, it'll be multiplied by just positive 1, 6 times 10 to the negative 19, 3, 7, 6 times 10 to the power of negative uh, 17 or coulombs, okay? That would have just been positive because we're multiplying it by the positive charge on a proton, which is 1.6 times 10 to 19. So no calculation was needed. This could have been our answer that we just stated. Okay, it would have been a one or two mark question. All right, two marks we got for stating the correct number and putting your coulombs in there, or it might've been just for one mark for the entire thing. So good job for realizing that we don't need to put in a, uh, or perform a calculation there. All right. So 15, 16, 17, the nature of the questions are pretty much the same. Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, let's start with number 15. It says two identical spheres that are metal have different charges. Sphere one has a charge of negative 4 comma 8 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs. Sphere 2 has 60 excess electrons. If the two spheres are brought into contact and then separated, what will the charge on each of the spheres now uh, be? Okay, well, first thing to note here is when we're analyzing the question is that only sphere one um, has been, um, or charge on sphere one has been given, all right, has been stated for us. Okay, sphere two, we still need to, uh, we still need to calculate, okay, so we need still need to calculate the charge on sphere two, okay, they are metal, 
okay, and they are brought into contact with each other, and then they're separated. So they are not insulators, okay? Question 16, they are insulators, okay? So let's go have a look at how we can answer number 15. Okay, so sphere one, I'm going to write down my information here. Q1 had a negative 4,8 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs. Okay, sphere two is what we need to calculate first. Okay, we don't know, but we know that the charge or the number of electrons that sphere two has is 60. 60 electrons, okay? And we need to calculate, um, obviously, our main equation, which is obviously to calculate the charge on either of these spheres after they are separated. Okay, cool. So let's have a look here. First, let's sort out Q2, okay? Which we use the formula for the, the charge on an object is equal to the number of electrons multiplied by the charge on one base electron. We have 60 of them. We're going to multiply them by negative 1, 6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Therefore, the charge on Q2, right, is, just let me get my, my calculator for quickly, 60 times negative 1, 6 times 10 to the negative 19. All right, they should have got an answer of minus 9, 6 times 10 to the power of negative 18. Coulombs. Okay, so now that we've got a answer for Q2, we can go ahead and substitute it in in our little information sheet here. Let's just take out this question mark. All right, so we substitute it in negative 9, negative 9, comma 6 times 10 to the power of negative 18 coulombs. Okay, so both are to the negative times 10 to the negative 18, and both are negative. Okay, so now we're looking for Q. Okay, this Q is obviously the charge on Q1 and 2 after they are separated. So, therefore, we use our equation. Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2, and we divide all of this by 2. Okay, so obviously we need to take, while well, it's minus 4 comma 8 times 10 to the negative 18 um, plus, well, minus 9 comma 6 <clears throat> times 10 to the negative 18. And I'm going to divide that all by 2. Okay, so I'm just going to go see a quick... Okay, there we go. Put it in my calculator. Answer uh, plus minus uh, not, um, four comma eight times ten to the power of negative eighteen. Right, we should get an answer of minus one comma four four times ten to the power of negative seventeen coulombs. Can someone please uh, check that for me, please? Okay, so that's the answer for the uh, top part, okay? But we still need to go divided by 2 because we need to find the charge on both, okay? So we still divide that by 2. All right, so therefore, our final step should be Q is equal to minus 7,2 times 10 to the power of negative 18. Again, we finish with... Coulombs, and that is the charge on both uh, Q1 and Q2 after they are separated. Okay, that should be the final answer. Um, Alex, is that correct now? I, when they asked for the excess, I got 45 electrons. Oh, no, we're not there yet. Sorry, no, we're just finishing off the uh, first part of the question. Is this part correct here? Yeah, I just want to check this with you that. Um, I haven't, I haven't made a mistake. So it's uh, definitely negative 7, 2 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. You got that, right? Yeah. Okay, that. good. Perfect. What about you, Yusha? Did you also get that? All 
All right, let's do the second part of that uh, question. The second part of that question was, if you just go check it out, was uh, how many electrons does this correspond to? Okay, so obviously now for the second part of this question, which would be, I'm going to do over here. I'm just going to rule the line here. Just to separate those two. Okay, and we're doing this little block here. Is now we need to have a look at this formula, which is Q is equal to N times QE. We know that the Q is minus seven comma two times ten to the power of negative eighteen coulombs. N is our unknown, but we know that it's equal times minus one comma six times ten to the minus nineteen. Okay, we divide both sides by negative 1 comma 6 times 10 to the minus 19. Therefore, n should be equal to, right, if I do this on my calculator, I just want to check. I know Alex has given the answer already. I just want to validate that that answer is indeed correct. And yes, it is. It's 45 electrons, right? Or if you just want to say 45 e to the minus on top. Okay.